Hey guys, it's Drew here. Today I'm on top of a beautiful parking deck in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, I will tell you later in the video why I'm on a parking deck. Uh, we're gonna talk about the top five things to look for when buying a used car. And some of those are usually hidden. So if you don't look for them, you're not gonna be able to find them. So hopefully this video will help you out. Stay tuned here and uh, hang in for the video because some of the best stuff is towards the end. Um, but uh, let's start with number one here, okay? So number one, when you're buying a car, don't be afraid to bring a rag and check all the fluids or bring a paper towel with you. Check the engine oil, check the transmission fluid. You wanna do that while the car's running, you can Google how to do that. You wanna check your power steering fluid, check your brake fluid. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure you've got coolant in the car for sure. Make sure there's no strong smell of coolant. If there's a strong smell of coolant, something could be leaking. Um, and so, you know, an owner's not always going to tell you that. Um, you know, you've got washer fluid too, but that's not essential. But you do want to make sure the windshield wipers work, obviously, and that the washers do, the windshield wipers do squirt. Okay, so another thing uh, related to the engine this is a uh, <coughs> four cylinder um, PT Cruiser. Well, PT Cruiser has what's called a timing belt on the inside of the engine, and those unfortunately require maintenance around 80,000 to 100,000 miles. A lot of people will sell their cars before that timing belt will go bad because you're looking at six to $800 in repairs for that because they actually have to open the engine up. Why they put a timing belt on instead of a timing chain, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you definitely want to Google your car that you're looking at buying and see whether it has a timing belt or a timing chain. Usually four cylinder engines like a Honda or or PT Cruiser, the less expensive cars have a belt and it's on the inside of the engine. Uh, cars like Chevy Tahoe's have a timing chain and the chain's made out of metal so it doesn't wear down. But when that timing belt goes, it's gonna cost you six to $800. You can also use that as a negotiation when you're buying a car. If you ask the owner, hey, has the timing belt been changed? Do you have records of that? Um, that is something that is a regular maintenance thing and it can cost you quite a bit. Another thing that can cost you on an engine is if your transmission goes out. Um, and a lot of these cheap four cylinder cars, the transmission also does go out over time. Um, it's really hard to tell uh, if transmission's on its last leg or not, but uh, definitely check the fluid, make sure it's not leaking any transmission fluid. And um, you can also uh, uh, ask if any repairs have been done on the transmission if the car has over 100,000 miles. If the car's already had a transmission replaced, that can be a good thing for you. Um, so uh, yeah, so make sure that you check the transmission. And when you're in, when you're doing your test drive, you can feel it if it's shifting a little funny that there might be a problem with the transmission. That's of course for automatic cars. If you got a clutch, it's a whole different story. Okay, so that's number one, that's a pretty big one. Number two is gonna be check for scratches on your car in the paint. Um, you know, it's really hard to find them sometimes. This car has a beautiful clear coat. I got this car for $3,000 on Craigslist. Unbelievable. Had a couple little problems and uh, you know, I'm hoping it won't <coughs> have any more problems. But just wanna show you right here, you can sort of see we're in a bright sunny area, so you can see that right there. They put some paint over this to cover it up, but there is a there are definite scratches there. I'm gonna show you over here as well, okay? This one was pretty obvious when I bought the car. Um, there was paint over this right here, um, but they had actually glued the bumper on in this area because the car, I guess, had hit one of those parking blocks and it pulled out and it pulled the bumper loose. So the bumper is actually loose on this vehicle, which kind of sucks, but uh, it's been, it's been performing for me. But anyway, I hit something in the road and it caused the whole bumper to come loose. So over here. So if you just look for little stuff like that, this is a negotiation or decide whether you even want to buy the car at all because it might show that there's hidden damage in your vehicle. So look for scratches. Use the scratches as a negotiation point. Um, <clears throat> this car has a great paint job. I think the person who owned it kept it in a garage. Although there are a couple deficiencies right here. If you look, there's a little bit of UV damage. That's pretty normal over time. Um, but there's some little spots there. I'm not too worried about that, but you can use it as a negotiation. So, okay, so there you go. Check for scratches, check for damage in the car, deficiencies, <coughs> things like that. All right, <coughs> so number three, check your tire treads. It's not that important of a thing, but it can be also used for negotiation in the price of a car. If your tire treads are kind of low, um, you know, these were fairly new tires when I got the car, so I got a good deal. Cause I, you know, you can spend up to probably two to $300, two to $400 for new tires for a car. So you're gonna wanna make sure you've got a decent amount of tire tread on your car. 
um, over here as well. And if the tires are in bad shape, you can tell the owner probably didn't take great care of the car. And uh, you may want to also put that in the negotiation saying, hey, the car's going to need new tires. Put that into the discount on the price. All right, so number four, we need to get inside the car for this. We want to check your AC. And uh, to do that, we'll start the car up here. Turn that radio off. Okay, so how do you know, we're coming into spring here, but how do you know if your AC is working in the winter time? That's a difficult one, okay? Well, it's not just if the light goes on, you know, because the air is going to be cold outside anyway. Sometimes you can hear the compressor come on in the car on the engine. You can hear it. It'll click on and off while it's on. You hear a little click. That's the compressor turning on and off. Um, I don't know that it's doing it. It's not necessarily doing it right now. It's probably a little low on on AC fluid, but uh, you definitely want to make sure you have AC, and it's hard to do in the winter time. So you will be able to hear that compressor click on and off uh, when you're doing it. You also want to make sure the fans blow on the car, etc., etc. But uh, so while you're checking your AC, if you've got a sunroof like I do, make sure the sunroof works. Make sure your power windows go up and down. Make sure your power locks work. Um, just anything like that. Uh, you want to make sure your interior lights work. You know, sometimes if those are out, it's just a light bulb, but uh, make sure that that's working properly. Okay, so just some simple stuff on the inside of the car there. Um, you know, make sure the, the air conditioner is a key one though, because if your AC is not working when you buy a car, especially if you buy it in the winter, it'll be really expensive. Air conditioning is very expensive to fix. It can be anywhere from 400 to almost $1,000 if you need a new compressor and everything else. Really, really expensive. Okay, so let's go on here to the very last reason. The last thing to look for when you're buying a used car is this is probably one of the most important as well. You're going to want to get under the car, bring it into a uh, place, or you can just do what I'm doing, take the camera and go underneath the car. You're going to want to look for rust. If you have rust on the underside of the car, do not buy the car. Um, you know, that actually, you know, can lead your car falling apart eventually. Um, so you definitely don't want that. And uh, so like I said, if you absolutely love a car, uh, you may have to put some money into it if the bottom of the car has rust from salt and snow. All right, so those are your top five reasons. Like I said, the rust is probably the number one. You can sometimes even on cars see if there's rust there. So we've got the, a good clear coat on this car. Um, okay, so my last tip. We did our five, top five things to look for when buying a used car. Um, last tip here is if you're buying a car on like Craigslist, buy it from an older person. You can't tell whether they're old. When I bought this car, they accidentally showed the license plate and it had a handicap signal, signal on it. It said disabled veteran. I got very lucky. This guy took good care of the car. There were a couple little flaws. Um, so if you can buy it from an older person, they usually drive their cars less and they keep them in the garage. So you'll have good, you know, good paint, good things like that. Um, okay, so now, why are we on the parking deck? Thanks for stay, sticking in here. Um, the reason we're on a parking deck is if you can take the car, usually somebody will go for a test drive with you. If you can get into one of these one hour free parking parking decks and you're driving it between the downstairs area of the parking deck in the, where the walls are side by side, you can listen really good to what's going on with the car engine. You can hear it so well. You can get out of the car and kind of listen to it. That echo is gonna let you hear every little thing in that car. And that's a great thing because you can hear little knocks, pings, you can hear all sorts of stuff. So if the person's willing who's selling it, most will, you know, see if you can drive it to a parking deck. You're obviously gonna have to pay for the parking if it's not, just find somewhere where there's walls side by side where you can listen to the echo of the engine and you can hear a lot of sounds that you normally would not hear. So, okay guys, well, uh, I hope this helps. These are the top five reasons with some bonuses what to look for when you're buying a used car. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff you you want to look at. Um, another thing, you know, they've said in other videos is obviously uh, if you've got milky oil, when you check the oil, it's a milky color, forget buying the car. That means there's a problem with the head gaskets. It can be really expensive. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, uh, this is Drew. Hey, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. And... Uh, like this video if it helps you out and uh i wish you luck on buying a used car it can be a challenging thing sometimes but uh craigslist is usually where i look uh, i usually try to buy from private owners if you can pay cash to somebody uh, you can get zero percent on some credit cards 
You can pay that off in a year. My buddy bought a car for $18,000 and he financed it. He's paying 500 a month and he's actually paying 18, over six years, he's paying another $18,000 for that car. So if you can buy a car on Craigslist from cash versus financing it, you'll save a lot more money. So, all right guys, this is Drew. Take it easy and thanks for watching. And uh, you guys are awesome. So uh, stay tuned, I got plenty of more good videos coming. And uh, you know, my channel's always got stuff about how to fix things, how to make your life better. All right guys, this is Drew, have a good one.